There's a mystery going on in the world of science, and I'm going to tell you about it. Since early 2020, an entire lineage of influenza has gone missing. Researchers have not sequenced and isolated a sample of influenza B. yamagata since early 2020. B. yamagata used to be one of two types of influenza B, and now it appears there's only one. It is a puzzling circumstance, and I'll tell you what it means. I'm Dr. Nock, PhD scientist, here to help you separate fact from fiction in health and nutrition. Rewind to early 2020. I know, just for a moment. Flu cases went to historically low levels. That's shown by the blue line here. Total influenza cases plummeted around March to April, which is typical for influenza to be coming down around that time. But the weird part is that it stayed really low through the next winter season. Of course, up until the COVID pandemic, flu cycled up and down seasonally, very predictably. That decline in influenza was due to a combination of COVID-19 precautions like masking and social distancing and lockdowns amidst a backdrop of decreased global travel and more attention on handwashing and decontamination. It's not too surprising that other viruses would have been spreading less at the same time we were trying to get COVID to spread less. You may have noticed that the blue line eventually came back up. Most types of influenza rebounded after that year as society returned to prior activities. However, the weird part is that one specific type of influenza never came back. Almost five years later, B. Yamagata is still missing. Why is this important? Every year, the World Health Organization and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration choose which strains of influenza to include in the annual flu vaccine. As you may know, there's a bunch of different types of influenza out there between influenza A and influenza B, and they come and go in different years. So they try to predict which ones will be circulating the most and put those ones in the seasonal vaccine. For the last decade or so, flu vaccines in the United States were quadrivalent, meaning they protected against four different strains, two influenza A, like H1N1 and H3N2, and two influenza B, B. Victoria and B. Yamagata, the one that's now missing. Since B. Yamagata has disappeared, the WHO and FDA have decided, as of 2024, to stop recommending it to be included in the seasonal flu vaccine. You may notice that the vaccine is now trivalent, including the same two influenza A's, but now just B. Victoria, not B. Yamagata. That decision was not taken lightly. Scientists and public health experts debated whether to keep the B. Yamagata strain in the vaccine for years, waiting to see if it might reappear. But the longer it stays missing, the more it seems like it may truly be gone. But could B. Yamagata still be out there? And why did this work for B. Yamagata specifically? It is possible that B. Yamagata is still circulating at very low levels in parts of the world where flu sequencing isn't very common. One reason it may have disappeared is that B. Yamagata was already circulating at very low levels before the pandemic. So then the added pressure of COVID-19 precautions may have pushed it over the edge. This is different from influenza A or other viruses like SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID, which can infect a really broad range of hosts, including many other animals. Influenza A, for example, can circulate in birds and swine and many other animals, making full eradication basically impossible. However, because influenza B only spreads among humans, it was more vulnerable to extinction when transmission was threatened by pandemic countermeasures. Similarly, COVID can circulate in wild reservoirs like bats, deer, tigers, ferrets, pumas, dogs, cats, hippopotamus, and more. So it's very difficult to fully eradicate viruses like influenza A. However, I think there's huge value in trying to prevent prevent the spillover of new influenza A from animals into humans for the first time. There are many different influenza A viruses circulating in nature that our immune systems have never been exposed to. Given the current scale of poultry and swine farming, it's inevitable that at some point there will be another strain of influenza A that breaks from animals into humans for the first time. Since we would have no pre-existing immunity to that type of influenza, that could easily cause a new pandemic. The only part that's uncertain here is when that random spill over event from animals to humans will happen, because eventually it will. Some ways to reduce the risk of that happening in the near term would be to 1. Drastically reduce the scale of animal farming, especially poultry and swine, because contact with animals is how a new influenza pandemic will likely begin. 2. Continued investments in biosecurity protocols and testing for farms and farm workers to detect and contain an outbreak if it does happen. And number 3. To mitigate the impact if it does happen, continue to develop and stockpile relevant vaccines and therapeutics so that in the event of an outbreak, we would not be starting from scratch. 